So what's useful about money? I mean, obviously, there's a reason why we use money. I mean, it's existed for a long time. And obviously, if it's lasted that long, it's served some kind of purpose. So let's look into that. What is money good for? Okay, let's break down money. Money is a couple of different things. For one, it's a quantitative way of measuring things. To relate one thing to another thing by assigning them numbers, a score, something like that, that we can compare things to. Then we have the idea of valuing something. Obviously, the, the one of the primary ideas of money is that it's giving a symbolic value to something, whether that's a type of work or an object or an idea. It's giving a value to something. And so that combined with the quantitative value gives us numbers. Money is basically just numbers, right? What happens if we have a system that has no money at all? That's a natural system. Okay, a natural system is one where the individuals in the system just do whatever they want. They input stuff, you know, taking stuff from outside and putting it in, and then so it outputs other stuff just freely. It's just free flowing stuff going around. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So that's a normal free natural system. So then what happens if we add money to the system? The money suddenly regulates the flow. There's sort of a, you know, some things still flow freely, but most of the stuff gets evaluated. It gets assigned a value before it can be exchanged, before it can flow somewhere. So there's a sort of a central organizing, regulating system that allocates this money somehow. It decides who gets money based on some arbitrary decision of the monetary system. And then it somewhat decides how much money each thing is evaluated for. So this one thing is worth 10, and then that thing over there is worth three. So there's this sort of a central controlling system regulating the flow of everything based on some set of rules. And what happens is that if an individual doesn't have enough money to get what they need, then they become deprived, they become deficient if I need to output something, but no one is there ready to pay for it, then I can't output it. Or maybe I output it, but I output it for free, but I don't get anything in return for that. And so maybe even if I'm the most giving person in the world and I give everything that I ever do for free, um, if I don't have any money and other people are demanding money for what they have, they're not giving it away for free, then I can't get what I need and I become deficient and sick and fail. So this is a problem. I mean, we see this everywhere. We know this is a normal problem of, mo of money and we call it inequality. So third option, there's a combination of these two things. We have the totally natural free flowing system and then we have the monetary system, which does actually add one benefit in that it helps evaluate the things that we need that the totally free-flowing system does not. So, so the monetary system combined with the natural free-flowing system gives us a really effective system. I don't know a term for this, but this kind of system has the best of both worlds. It has the free flowing option so that there's nothing, there's no centralized system getting in the way regulating who gets the, who gets to evaluate things. 
So in the monetary system, you only get to define something's value if you have money or if the other individual has money. If you're outputting something and they they don't have money, they can't evaluate your output. And vice versa, if you want to input something and you don't have any money, you can't evaluate someone else's output. So this third option, this combined option, gives us a way to do both of these things without the regulation that gets in the way of the free flow. So this system, what it would be, is it replaces money with a sort of um, prioritization system. So it's we're still evaluating things quantitatively using numbers. We're still giving it a value, our inputs and our outputs. But we're not limiting who can evaluate. Everyone can evaluate equally. So this is an equality of a monetary system, of a currency, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's not money because it's not a competitive thing. It's not limited, but it is an evaluation tool, a quantified evaluation tool. So we prioritize the things that we have that we want to get rid of, and we prioritize the things that we want to get. So our input and output needs um, can be labeled with an evaluation. I tend to use a percentage because that's a really good way to list a priority that's sort of universal and it can be applied to any system. But we could also use colors or we could use, you know, a smiley face and a frowny face and a neutral face, you know, any kind of four stars, five stars, any kind of system you want to use, we can break that down into percentages, right? And now this would, would obviously involve computers for the most part. I mean, you could do this in a smaller system without computers with just people telling each other, you know, oh, I would really like X right now. Or right now I want to do this. So I can rank the things that I'm prioritizing, the things that I want to do, that I want to output, and the things that I want to input, and then just put those rankings out attached to some sort of advertising or just physically attached to things. And like I said, with computers, the quantification process will help us interface with the computers about prioritizing the flow of resources. Um, the centralized computer system could match the priorities of inputs and outputs and sort of help everyone find what they're looking for, find good matches sort of like a dating service, but for resources for everyone. Um, so this is my idea. This is the combination of the best things about money and the best things about a, a just a natural free flowing wild system and combining them in a way that everyone ideally gets the best that they can get, the best that's out there to offer by prioritizing things in a quantitative way like we do with money, except that in this case, there's nothing restricting anything. There's no regulation. There's no one there stopping you from evaluating something or from exchanging something or for giving or receiving something because you don't have enough money. Everyone has an infinite amount of, of ranking.